Hello, welcome back to Ubi Nasi Jilak Noding. In this episode, I want to talk about this upcoming feature of Geometry Nodes. It's the Tessellate Nodes, basically allowing you to create a component and then assigning it into polygon face, similar to tissue add-on or adaptive polygons in Svetshop. So this is the Tessellate, uh, Tessellate Mesh, and there's this components that's being generated here from Svetshop being added so in this case I, I did quite a lot here and I can reduce it to the original shape which is the just this cone so it's looking like a looking a little bit like tentacles uh, the original shapes is just this guy over here let me show you so this is uh, something that I created using Sverchop just simply a box, box that's uh, being extruded, and I make the the ends of extrusions hollow, so I can play around with the the shape of this, you know, like uh, the, the shape of extrusions, and also the scale of inset, and it's gonna change this result, and I think this guy is actually welded, yeah, it's welded together. And subdivide it so it's looking quite kind of nice and you can reuse this geometry um, and using tessellate mesh set to quad there are actually a couple of options and there's also option for the thickness let's uh, take a look at the cone if I reduce the resolution of the cone you can see or increase this so each of polygon face is being replaced by the component so that's a uh, pretty interesting to be able to do this um, it creates like a like a fabric tissue it's a so you you work with the component itself <clears throat> this is I think the most basic example <clears throat> excuse me and um, let's see there's a couple of options that you can do for example with sphere chalk itself, you can use a random, a random number. Let this guy generate like value between zero and one, and then plug this into the mask. By doing this, we can do like the masking, and this this can give a different shapes. Maybe this is what you want. Maybe this is not what you want. But give this a try, it's very interesting. And also on top of this, you can you can play around here with the thickness and the peak components. Okay, let's just a little bit more advanced if you want to do that. This one is playing around with the thickness. So you can randomize the thickness, which is pretty cool. So you can see it's no longer the same extrusion uh, is it's not like they are not all the same in terms of um, scale for each of the components you can randomize this what I did next was to just simply create a circular array this will give you that like like a starfish once again I think a lot of Procedural creation is really to create this kind of creatures very very interesting So if we yeah, it looks like a skeleton somehow like But the tessellate tessellate mesh is really really interesting um, Definitely something to keep eyes on Let's get rid of the thickness variations for now if you create like a, a couple of different variants like random shapes you can actually have multiple shapes that you can combine together uh, for example if I just duplicate this guy so we have alpha beta with this one I have a different shape different shape of tessellations so we have two okay 
So maybe reduce the subdivision here. Let's bring them together into these geometry nodes and assign this as a component. So you're gonna you gonna have this ability to pick a component with random value. So you have variations. Yeah, of course they are not always connected. You need to use weld. We don't have weld node, but maybe in the future. So if we make sure the the scale is kind of touching each other, they're gonna weld together and create a some interesting shapes. So that's basically the idea. And in order to use this for now, it's you need to use the patch build under Blender download instead of using build uh, instead of using daily branch. Go into under patch. For mine, I'm using Mac OS, and this is the D thirteen five one five. This is the the patch that you want you want to download. Just pick the system, and then you can have this. Uh, this node tessellate, tessellate mesh there's a couple of options like instead of quad you can also use the fan one fan or frame oops I don't know what it is but quad for now and then you can play around with the thickness and the create all kind of different components so that's basically what I want to show you uh, there's a lot here. Uh, you can actually, I believe, if you create like a pattern uh, using curve. I haven't tried this. For example, you have this Bezier, Bezier curve. Let me hide everything. Let's say you start with Bezier curve, delete everything. This is just an idea. Just draw, and we're gonna draw something that's kind of generating pattern. So this is one pattern. Duplicate it, delete everything. So this is just pretty random, but this is gonna be like a like a fabric that you can connect together. Let's duplicate this as well. Delete everything and just draw, you know, just draw like a random pattern that you can later stitch together. Oh, okay. I was using poly. That's okay. Maybe this should be busier. Curve cleanup. Oh well, save this. So we have three base here that we can combine together using adaptive. So let's get back to our creations I want to replace every polygon face of the cone with this Bezier curve I definitely I think this might not work but let's see so three different patch components let's get rid of this for now just cut this let's try one Yeah, it doesn't seem doesn't seem to like curve at the moment so curve to mesh yeah there you go starting to work like this there oh it, it's generating a lot of details Maybe too many. Um, 
Maybe I should cancel that. Let's try again. Blender 3.1 with tessellate node. Save as new blend. Get rid of weld subdivisions. We don't need all those for now. Disconnect this. Disconnect, delete that. So this is one component. Curve to mesh. doesn't seem to be doing anything yeah probably I should have tried this beforehand let's try a circle ah, okay that's our curve and we have to do the same thing so duplicate this Replace this with Bezier curve number two. Plug this into the component. And one more. And then we use random value. Plug this into the peak components. So If we increase the number of cone subdivisions, we have random pattern being applied to the cone. This is our cone with the right amount of segment tessellate. So we have this result. It's looking pretty weird. Maybe we can use the same radius curve. This is Bezier 2. This one should be integer. Plug into the peak components. Okay, we are getting somewhere. And now. Okay, pretty interesting. I think I flip. I flip the cone accidentally. At the moment, it's looking like a little bit like Christmas tree, but with the uh, all kind of random writing. Okay, yeah, it's unusual, but yeah. So that's the idea basically you start with a components like curve or like extruded object uh, using Svertov or something or something that you create yourself manually and then you bring all the components together and then just use it as a tessellation mesh. This is going to replace all the polygon face with whatever you plug this into. So that's uh, using pod and give a random value thickness and you're gonna have more random randomness for each one of the patch or components or well, this one is really quite random so 
totally something that you need to spend some time with. This looks a little bit like snowflake also. It looks like some kind of aliens language. Um, all right, so yeah, that's pretty much it with the tessellate node introduction to tessellate uh, tessellate mesh node. Uh, like like I said, similar to tissue add-on, similar to adaptive me adaptive mesh, but it's just a lot faster because you're, you're using instancing, and there's a lot of cool things that you can create using this tessellate mesh. You can create a lot of details very, very quickly, basically like a for building or something. All right, so thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.